Welcome back to 4B. What we're going to be doing today is fitting a boost ring. And here's the boost ring here. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort out the tool that I need. And I've got a 10mm spanner. This is a T30 Torx right angled bit. And this is a ball ended 5mm Allen key. And you might notice I've just cut the end down on this Allen key and you'll see why later. That's just to make access a little bit easier because it's quite a long Allen key. But the ball end, you'll see where that comes in as well. So, what is a boost ring? For any particular dose of fuel and air that enters the cylinder, that fuel can only burn at a certain rate. However, the engine can spin at any one RPM ranging from its tick over speed at around 7,500 RPM, 7 RPM to about 4,500 RPM. Now because the fuel can only burn at a certain rate given its dose, the timing of that fuel when it is injected into the cylinder is critical to get the maximum cylinder pressure. The more cylinder pressure, the greater the force on the piston, and the greater the force on the piston, the more power the engine will output. Very simply, what the boost ring allows to happen, it allows more dynamic control over the timing of the engine which basically advances the timing very slightly, injecting the diesel very slightly earlier at the higher revs. That in turn gives you a cleaner burn of fuel and more power. More power as a result of more cylinder pressure because the time it takes for the fuel to get from its very first ignition as it's injected into the hot air in the top of the cylinder to get to its maximum burn rate. Now the trick is to optimize that burn rate and that's what this boost ring does. It fits to the side of the pump and that pump exists on 200 and 300 TDI diesel engines in Land Rovers. And it's just going to exaggerate the timing advance that is already built into the pump by giving the piston, the control piston, for that mechanism slightly more wiggle room. So what we're looking at here is the fuel injection pump on a 300 TDI engine. And the area to which we're interested in is down here. I don't know if you can see that cap there and we need to remove this cap. Now it's a bit of a squeeze to get the tools in which is why I showed you at the beginning a, a cut down tool and the Torx bolts that hold this on are held in with thread lock so they're going to need a bit of jiggery pokery to get them out. So the 10 mil spanner we're going to remove that bolt there just to give us a bit more access. This is the cap that we're interested in. Now, I would suggest that if your engine or your fuel injection pump is really, really dirty, it would be wise to maybe clean around here, get some geyser or some gunk or some diesel petrol, whatever solvent you want to use, and just clean around here before you take this off. Because this is um, a hydraulic system in here. It runs on fuel pressure so it's using the hydraulics of the fuel pressure in order to make this run and we want to try and keep that as clean as possible you'll see here i've got cap head screws on and the reason for that is i've had this off in the past you're going to find here on the very first time torx torx t30 bolts and they're going to be held in with a bit of loctite so they're not going to give up particularly without a fight but with a bit of patience, you'll get them out. Like I say, access is tight, 
so patience is the key here so let me pull these out and I'll show you what we've got in underneath there right so we're just getting the final bolt out and releasing the cap and it's going to weep a little bit of fuel that's okay because there's usually fuel on this side of this piston anyway find some of the rest of the lamp on so there's the cap let's take that to one side and you'll notice there are also a couple of springs there we go so that's that's what we're looking for that cap and those two springs so let's just take those to one side and show you what the next procedure is so here we have the two springs there's a little one and a slightly stiffer one and we have the cap which if you look in the inside of here contains a couple of shims now let me just knock those out see there there's two of them what we're going to do is we're going to put some shims in from the boost ring pack and they're here now I'm going to put three shims in on this engine I'd recommend going with three first and put those in there like that put the old shims back on top like that the boost ring is going to go on there let's just get the seal in center spring goes back in main spring goes back in and the kit comes with a couple of slightly longer bolts and you'll notice that these are hex heads and the reason we've used hex heads is to give us the advantage of using the ball end allen key to fit them back in so let me do that and i'll come back to you in a second so here you can see the cap going back on these are the two replacement screws that come with the pack and you can just make out below it the boost ring so all i need to do now is snug these down now it you're fighting a little bit against the spring pressure here. Um, what you might want to do is put a large screwdriver or a pry bar in against there and just, just push down. In fact, let me get one. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got a pry bar here. And if I push that against there, that just takes a bit of the tension off the springs. And it's going to allow you to get your fingers in there and just get those cap head bolts started. So let me take this away and just nip them up with the Allen key. And again, having a ball ended Allen key at this, at this stage just means that you can get on those screws a little bit better and just, just twist them into position. So let me snug that up and I'll come back to you. So there we go nice and snug so all that remains to do is to put that that bolt back in there and we're done so go take it for a test drive and enjoy a bit more power in fact a lot more power <laughs> and if you haven't got a boost pin check a boost pin in as well the difference will be night and day Now you may be asking, why multiple shims? Well, every engine has got its own personal set of wear characteristics. And that's gonna be down to how the engine, how the car's been driven, how the engine's been revved over the course of its lifetime, and how well it's been serviced. So we supply multiple shims. I recommend you start off with three but there's no reason why you can't take shims out or put shims in. If you take shims away, you're gonna increase the timing advanced effect. 
if you add shims in you're going to reduce the effect it's entirely up to you the best thing to do is to have a little bit of a play and find out what is best for your own engine and find the sweet spot but start off with three it's a good baseline anyway the booster ring kits are available from forby.co.uk thanks for watching stay safe i'll see you on the next video thank you